Since this is a project designed for beginners, I thought we'd start by talking a little bit about wood preparation. I started with 5 quarter inch stock and then surface planed it on both sides to 1 inch thickness and then cut it to the width specified by Woodturner Pro. I then took those boards, rotated them by 90 degrees, and cut and split that one inch board right in the middle with a thin kerf saw. I used a feather board to hold it against the fence and make sure that that feather board stops before the place where the blade begins. Then take all of the wood and surface it all to three eighths of an inch, surface it all at the same time so that that every board is going to be exactly the same thickness. So now that we've cut our pieces, uh, if you recall from our design uh, tutorial, we ended up with having three different board widths. We have board A, we have got board B, and we have board C. So here's board A, there's B, and uh, the reason there's a B1 and a B2 is B1, all of these are the same width, but they're going to be cut into different segment edge lengths. So this is going to be our B1 rings, this is going to be for the B2 rings, and this is for the C rings. So once these are all done, one way that we're going to go more quickly when we start to cut these into segments is to gang them so we cut multiple uh, segments at the same time. Now part of the reason for the tornado design was so that there would be an equal number of segments on each row of the three different species. So that means by cutting these together we can stack one of each species and then we know that we'll have the right number uh, for a number of segments for a ring. And so what I've done to make this easier I took those three pieces and I laid them on the edge and made sure that they're all clamped, just finger tight is fine, and put a little thin CA glue right on the end. And what that does is that's going to make them function as if it was one board. And so when we get to the point where we're going to cut these on the, on the, on the miter saw, when we make our first cut, it's much easier if you're rolling one board as opposed to multiple boards that just want to, and also this always, once you rotate it, it just needs to slide up against the fence and you know that everything is uh, correct as opposed to if you do it with three loose boards, you've got to constantly be making sure that each board is against the fence. So when we're done, we will have, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll have four boards and they're going to look like this. Before we go to the miter saw, I want to talk about the sled that you need to build first. Um, a, a miter saw is a great tool, but it was not necessarily designed for making segments for an open segment vessel. By adding a zero clearance sled, it becomes a great solution for cutting segments. So here I've made a sled, and it's just made out of MDF. I've got two pieces of MDF. One of them is three inches, one of them is four inches. That dimension is not critical. In fact, there, there may be reasons why you want to change this dimension, these dimensions. But this sled, made for my miter saw, I have set it up so that it is going to make three different cuts. And those cuts are a 90 degree cut, an 8 degree cut, and a 5.5 degree cut. The, the 90 degree cut is just simply to allow me to cut uh, boards to length. But all of the, the cutting of segments is of either going to be at 8 degrees or at 5.5 degrees. So for this project, we're using the Seg Easy plate that is 18-4. That means that there are 18 segments and the gap is 4 degrees. Now in Woodturner Pro, you will use the percentage of 20 in the field that auto calculates the open segments. And by doing that, it's going to uh, calculate a cutting angle of 8 degrees. And so you will, if you're using this plate, you're always going to cut your angles at 8 degrees. If you're using the 24 uh, segment plate, then you're always going to use 5.5 degrees as your cutting angle. So what I've got here is the 90 degree, the 8 degree, and the 5.5 degree. Now, uh, what I've also done is when I built this sled, I eased the, I eased the edge on this side just for a dust uh, trap. 
And so then I have also added some um, stops on the underneath side that is just going to help me position this so that it always goes in exactly the same place on the miter saw. Now, it doesn't take a long time to build these, but the last thing you want to do is cut through it. So I've marked on here to set the depth stop. Set the depth stop. So just any time I put this on, I want to make sure that I set the depth stop so I don't cut through the board. At the miter saw, the very first thing we're going to do is set the depth stop. So now, the deepest it will cut is right there. Today we're going to be cutting for the 18 segment ring, and so that is the stop that I want to, to go. So I'm just going to put it on here and slide it till it hits that stop. And then I'm going to use a single clamp. to hold it. And then I'm going to change the miter angle to 8 degrees and then we're going to test it at the back and then I'm going to pull it forward and test it at the front. And so that will be fine. And the, the last thing you want to make sure is that the teeth are going to cut completely through the board but just barely through the board. And so now I'm going to lock it so that it is, is going to work more like a chop saw and that simply is just going to take some more um, vari variables out of the equation. We're going to be cutting this board that is made up of three, uh, three different boards but again this is glued at the end so it's going to work as if it was a single board. And we're going to use the, the miter saw the way it was designed and that is to hold the sock with the left hand operate the saw with the right hand and the important thing is we want to let the cutoffs fall away from the blade. So in order to do that I needed a stop system that is, can quickly become a stop and then quickly get out of the way. And so what I've got, what I'm going to be using is a product made by Incra called the Flip Shop Stop. And so I've, I'm going to use it on this side and there are just some knurled knobs here and so I'm going to attach that underneath here and that's going to let us use it as a stop and also then get it out of the way. So the very first thing I'm going to do is just get it close here and just lock it down. And we're going to cut a segment edge length of 15-30 seconds. And the way to do that is you have to start with the board you're going to be cutting and the important place is right here along this edge. That's where you're going to place your ruler. And I'm first going to start with the end of this board out of the way of the saw curve. So that when I put the saw curve down, I'm going to measure from the right hand side of the curve. And then I'm going to move the stop into place. And then I'm going to lock it down and make sure you do that securely so it doesn't move. With this rolled steel bar, this is not good. This is when you put it into place. It's not. There's uh, no flex at all. So it will be. It'll stay in that place. So the first thing you will do is you will put it on here and you will cut off the end. And that's going to give us our um, our first cut. So now, from now on, you're just going to put the stop into place. Roll the board over, make sure it's firmly against the fence, move the stop out of the way, and make your It says that we need to make 16 segments of each of these species. And so just continue making your cuts. When the board is getting short and you no longer, it's no longer safe to have your hand here, then it's time to use a hold down device. And I've got two different hold down devices that are identical except this one is taller than this one. And I got this uh, design from my good friend Malcolm Tibbetts. And so what I'm going to, to do is use the one that when it's on, t on the board, 
I want it to be fairly parallel. And that's also going to give me a vertical surface that I can get right next to where the cutoffs are going to be. And so this enables you to use uh, quite a, a short board and still have uh, a, enough hold down so that it, it's still a safe and accurate cut. So now I've set up the next board, which is our B width board. It's B2 for the second segment edge length, which is 1930 seconds. So this is the board we're going to be using. I've got the, the, uh, the stop set at 1930 seconds, and we've got quite a few segments to cut. And so I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice if there was a way, to, when we cut those, it would be nice if they ended up in something like this. So let's see what we've got here. So that's the good news. The bad news, I'm not going to show you this because I'm still working on it. I've got, uh, uh, it's working pretty well, but I think I can make it work a little bit better. So this is kind of just a teaser because in the next project we'll, uh, we'll show this. But anyway, we're going to use it for, for this and just see how long it takes to cut a number of segments. just stop there and that's how long it did to take to do 18 segments so anyway it's kind of I think it's going to be kind of fun this is especially useful if you're doing a, let's say from the 24 segments and let's say maybe they're a quarter inch thick and you're cutting six at a time you really are going to have a lot of segments and so this is just a very quick way to go to uh, cut a bunch of segments so here are all the segments that are going to make the ten rings in our tornado globe. We've got the A's. There's going to be two rings of A's, two rings of B1, two rings of B2, and four rings of C. So as you can see, it, it doesn't take that long to cut the segments for a, bowl, for a vessel like this. So in the next video, we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to use this table saw instead. So thanks for watching.